Biodiversity does not speak to me. Um, I understand what it is. I have no problems understanding. I can define it. I can explain it, but it doesn't speak to me. Uh, what speaks to me is, you know, we are here in, in Boston, uh, the first snowflake in sometime in November or December. That speaks to me. Uh, the snowstorm speaks to me because it puts me in my house for three days without electricity. Uh, the first leaves that come up in the spring, that, that pale light baby green, that speaks to me. Uh, the wonder of that tree outside my office, that's going to change its color 15 times before fall comes. That speaks to me. Um, I, I've, I've seen gorillas in their real environment. That speaks to me. Uh, the mighty Zambezi uh, making its way to, to Victoria Falls. That speaks to me. There's a monkey really is. There's a monkey somewhere near Victoria Falls who once stole my camera. Uh, that spoke to me. <laughs> it really is. I'm looking for that monkey. Uh, that, that speaks to me. A lot of things speak to me. Uh, and, 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 and not all of them are, 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 are beautiful and wondrous. Uh, the mosquito, the dengue mosquito speaks to me. Uh, the, the, the fact that the dengue mosquito is carrying disease to places that where you didn't have dengue, that speaks to me. Um, bugs and bees that I don't get to see but which pollinate uh, the world that gives me my food, uh, that speaks to me. Microbes that are in the soil, they speak to me. And I'll tell you what speaks to me. What speaks to me is that all of this wonder speaks to all of us. But what also speaks to me is that what does not speak to all of us is the realization of our own responsibility. We, we do know that we, this one most arrogant of all species, has in our arrogance had an impact that is existential, not just to us, but to everything else around us. And the fact that that does not get to influence my own actions speaks to me. And I wonder what will it take for us to realize that in the power that we have achieved as one species that can impact all other species, there is also the responsibility. I don't think, I don't think it's as simple as finding a better word than biodiversity. Go and choose your word. Uh, this is a made up word. Ecology is another made up word. You can choose whatever word you, you choose, but I think until we can put some meaning into whatever word that is, no matter how made up it is, nothing will really, really, really change. And, and what needs to change somehow is the realization by this one arrogant species that there is, there are grave consequences to our arrogance, A. B, that there is great urgency in action. And C, that that urgency of action has to be individual. And I wonder what will it take for all of this to speak to all of us in a way that something will change. I suspect, I don't know the answer, but I suspect part of us, part of it, what, will, what it will take is learning from nature itself. In that arrogance, one aspect of that arrogance of us as a species, and now I talk about us as scholars, is that we've broken up a complex problem into bite-sized pieces that do not fit. So there are my wildlife colleagues who've made it their business to look at the sexy species, the cute and cuddlies of the world. There are the forest people, my friends, who've made it their business to look at timber and lumber because that's what comes out of trees. There are the climate people, including myself, who've become counters of carbon and managers of carbon. There are development people who say they speak for people but sometimes speak of people without understanding the ecological context in which people thrive. And you can go on and on and on. And we've made these silos. And that is what cannot sustain. At some point, somehow, these fiefdoms of knowledge, these fiefdoms of policy, climate policy here, forest policy there, biodiversity policy here, development stuff here, somehow they have to connect in a web of interrelated activities that talk to each other the same way as this thing that you call biodiversity talks to itself. That, I think, is the great race we are involved in. It's a race 
between human wisdom and human knowledge. I have no doubt that we have the knowledge to do the things that are needed. I wonder if we have the wisdom. Thank you.